southbound, I've been hellbound, riding on the midnight train. Going too fast now, think all so down. What's going on, guys? Tristan and Tony with the Zero Duck 30 podcast. Uh, we're excited to be back here with another podcast. We actually took a week off, which uh, is pretty unlike us because we've done it for 26 weeks in a row. But uh, we're excited today. The glasses we have on, uh, the owners of that company we're having on today, Hook and Bullet. Yep. Uh, so these guys are really doing something unique in the sunglasses industry, and we're honored to have them on today. Uh, Rob and Bill, why don't you guys give us some of your background, and thank you for taking the time to come on the podcast. Yeah, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. I'll go first here uh, billy and i have known each other for a lifetime literally almost but uh from my perspective i come from i'm from texas it's where bill and i uh first got to know each other he's got a background in arkansas which he'll dig into in a minute but big duck hunter bow hunter fisherman blue water fishing is actually what i really try to spend uh all my money on unfortunately but, uh, <laughs> whereas billy grew up chasing ducks in the in, in Arkansas rice fields in the timber, I was kind of polar opposite. I grew up hunting ducks in the marsh of Texas. So just a couple guys that really like uh, the, the hook and bullet life and mm-hmm. do everything we can to, to live it every day. Heck yeah. That's awesome. And uh, as far as when, can you guys kind of go into when you guys first met? Was it like grade school or what? <laughs> did, did, you, did you guys date the same girl what's going on <laughs> i know rob's a much better looking guy than i am <laughs> no it's funny though we it, it's grade school and, and it's kind of funny we grew up together uh probably shoot billy what was it like fourth grade on to uh yeah. to junior high and then mm. had a, a little separation billy moved off to to Colorado oh, and wow. then uh, just happenstance we ended up at the same school in East Texas for uh, university wow that's oh, awesome wow so it just kind of you guys had like this this uh, magnetism that brought you guys back together <laughs> I guess you know, what the, the uh the appeal for beer put us in the same place. I guess. <laughs> so, so let me get this straight. Let me just uh, nutshell this for you guys. It was a win, but for the ladies, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys are anything like me and my buddy that we've known each other since, since we were six years old, I, uh, I can, I can understand that uh, relationship. <laughs> Good stuff. Well, what did, um, you guys, cause I know when we had talked before, Rob, um, you'd mentioned you guys have both, you know, had careers in other types of uh, worlds. I can't remember off the top of my head what you guys were doing, but what did you guys go to school for in your guys' career path up until you started hooking bullet? Yeah, I'll take that first. I went to school apparently to drink beer, to be on the team, <laughs> and uh, fish as much as I could and kill ducks in East Texas. But I like it. Uh, Bill, Billy was the smart guy of the outfit, and uh, he's got an engineering mind. That's awesome. Wow. It, it's interesting because we, when we were teenagers, we had a very fortunate opportunity to go fishing abroad on a sport fishing boat. Work, both worked on it. And uh, what a great opportunity that was. And then the way I like to think of it is we, we had to uh, take time out and grow up a little bit. And we, we did. And then we uh, now we're kind of full circle back to wanting to do a lot more fishing and a lot more hunting than what we were doing in our other career paths so we're, we're excited about our opportunities and that are in front of us and the company that we have right now That's wow awesome. so what what about you bill so kind of give us a little bit of, of your background yeah so my background uh, you know rob and i went to school together i i, I studied uh, of all things computer science and I uh, don't want to date myself, but it's changed a lot. <laughs> so it's a whole different world out there. But uh, I had a career in that, and then I, I ventured into oil and gas and real estate and did that for the biggest part of my life. And and then one day, it, it was kind of an interesting story because one day I was sitting there and I was like, you know, this, this, is, this is great and all and, and can make a little money, but I want to do something that I really, really like to do. So I, I literally – called Rob up and said, you know, uh, I think I want to start a sunglasses company. And, and he was like, 
yeah, what a great idea. And, and, I, said, <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, good, because you're involved yeah. in it as of now. <laughs> I think what I said, frankly, was call me when you sober up, and we'll talk about it later. <laughs> well, you know, well, it's... Well, one, one, of the, one of the big things about it was I, I said, look, I, we, we don't want to sell to you know new york runway models and we don't want to compete with the people that are fashion oriented we want to we want to sell sunglasses or what we call purpose-built optics to to people that hunt and fish and shoot and rob rob literally said uh oh the, the hook and bullet crowd wow and there you go that's yeah. pretty damn cool yeah um i guess that's a good point to kind of roll into the you know your purpose-built optics um I guess kind of topically, and then we can kind of get into some of the science behind it. What is the, when you hear, uh, you know, purpose-built optic, optics, uh, I know I had talked to Rob before and he kind of explained to me how that's kind of, like some companies use like buzzwords for similar stuff, but you guys are truly doing uh, purpose-built optics. Right. So, so that's exactly right. So, the concept came from thinking about can we engineer lens that could perform better in a specific environment. So if you're chasing billfish offshore, 100 miles offshore, do you need the same lens as if you're in a rice field in, in uh, the delta of Arkansas shooting greenheads? Mm -hmm. Or, or you know, I'm catching crappie on Lake Grenada or where, you know, so many different scenarios pop up. Mm -hmm. And so what we did was we we kind of hunted around a little bit, found a lens maker, didn't really agree with with their pursuit, whether, you know, the way they wanted to handle it. So we went to Zeiss and you probably know Zeiss from your scopes and binoculars and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Well, they also have a sun lens division. And so we went to them and we said, hey, we want to engineer lenses that really give you an advantage and what you're doing and, and involve lenses from where they were. And Zeiss came back and said, man, we not only do we want to do this, but we're doing it in other areas right now that are, that are really working out good. And, and there's some shooting lenses, but one of my favorite examples that they gave was we've got a, we got a lens that baseball players wear that when a pitcher releases a ball, you can pick up on the laces, the red laces, of the ball to determine the rotation of the ball so they have a better opportunity to hit it and and no. yeah and so it was, it's amazing when you start looking at what a what a an optic lens does and how it does it and you do it it does a lot of things through filters and muting certain colors and highlighting certain colors and when you bring all that together we can create these lenses that really do give you an, an advantage into the environment that you're in. Mm, and yeah. so that built optics is. And that's, that is so cool. I mean, um, I'm sitting here as you're talking about the, the threads on a baseball, I'm thinking about how many, I mean, think about all of us that got into waterfowl and it starts off. There's, there's definitely a graduation process and what does a duck fly like? Right. And you, you watch them and, man a new duck hunter you're like there's a there's a barn swallow there's a there's a there's a crow there's a blackbird and all of them are ducks right every mm -hmm. single one and um but then you start to progress as a hunter the more you hunt birds the more you pick up on the 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 bowling pins for for pintails or the erratic flight of a teal or whatever it is and i'm just sitting here listening to you guys say that and i'm going dude what a great advantage for me to be sitting there in the blind and be able to see a wing patch or a flutter or something that identifies that bird um, because we do that. I mean, when we're out there, it's so important from a, um, like if you're hunting models yeah, and you can only shoot one, you sure you don't want to shoot more than one. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, I just think that's going to be, I, I mean, I, that's where I see it going into the waterfowl industry it's it, that detail is is required and so needed yeah you, you raise a great point and really what we're trying to do is provide a quick target acquisition regardless of pursuit so if you're chasing mm. redfish on the flats uh or if you're hunting ducks in the timber 
So you need to be able to pick up that target quickly and uh, take your shot, either whether you're you're fly, casting a fly or pulling the trigger. For sure. But getting on it quick. And what happens, and it's as Billy mentioned, this has been done uh, in terms of truly dialing into the sight picture has been done on the professional shooting side. Mm-hmm. Nobody's picked up on it on on the uh, recreational shooter or or the fisherman side to the to the depth that we have because it's expensive it's hard mm-hmm. but the science is there and so what we're trying to do is make sure that you can pick up on whatever it is you're after quickly and essentially make the most of every opportunity and when, when billy said that he wanted to get in the sunglasses company that was that was kind of quick and short kind of sh- shortened the uh the timetable there what we were looking at was getting into the the outdoor industry and what we tumbled to is heck everything has gone high tech i mean mm-hmm. quite frankly right down to the underwear we're wearing guys it's high yeah tech. it is it's, and everything is designed now to give you some kind of advantage in the field or on the water and yeah. the, the the missing link or the last uh last frontier there were the glasses the optics uh, arena and what we found out is the same technology we were working we were traveling in the caribbean chasing billfish back in the late 80s and we're dating ourselves now (laughs) uh is what we were wearing you know three years ago because it has not evolved and and essentially what's happened is that it's a giant business there are two major players in the the fat and the sun lens world and most of or both of those are are fashion conglomerates right and so they've got the market yeah, they've got the market share, and they really don't have to evolve. And so we saw that as an entry point, Billy did, quite frankly, as to where we can go and raise the bar to that part of uh, of what we do and the stuff that we take into the field and on the water. And mm-hmm. That's how it came about. Yeah, and, you know, some of the examples that have been so interesting to me from when we had talked uh, previously, Rob, is two things that really stri- – well, actually, a few things. The, obviously, the baseball story, that really st- – you know, hit home. I was like, wow, that's really unique. Um, you know, you talking about the bill fishing, you know, in the eighties and nineties, and then, you know, three years ago, same technology. Um, but you know, the things that really stuck with me is like you mentioned earlier that you got the recreational side of hunting. There's, you're absolutely right. There's nobody doing that. And, um, as, as a hunter, you know, one of the things, (laughs) and it's funny, you know, I posted those pictures with me in the I think I got like one of the inshore glasses uh, in the square grouper, but I was duck hunting in them or whatever. But I yeah. I posted a picture with that, and uh, it's funny because you know my dad is so OCD about like being camouflaged and stuff like everything. that. Everything, like everything. And you look at the he has the um, I forget the model, but he has like the sangria lens on, you know, the wing shooting mm-hmm. lens, and uh, it's it kind of blends in. You know, it's it's just one of those like. It's so optimized for hunting. I mean, um, it, it's just, it's something that you guys have tapped into that is just, I mean, like you said, it's really going high tech where high tech wasn't. Yeah. And I don't see it reflecting. Yeah. You know, when we were out there teal hunting in them and the sun, you know, we set up stupid and we were facing the sun, <laughs> you know, because the sun wasn't supposed to come out, and this was the best way to, to face it, and, yeah. um, and the sun came out. Well, we're sitting there looking right into it, mm. and I didn't have a problem at all. Yeah. And But one thing I did was I took my sunglasses off, and I wanted to see mm-hmm. what it looked like when the sun was just hitting off them because I'm OCD about everything. I, I've told yeah. these guys, you know, sit down. Shut up. Just yeah. like uh, <laughs> Lieutenant Dan, you know. <laughs> and... Uh, but uh, but that really impressed me right off the bat that you guys uh, take. I mean, there there's there's definitely a, a sh- I wouldn't call it a shine, but it doesn't reflect light. Yes, yeah, it's not or a shine. reflective kind of one lens. Yeah, yeah, it's not a reflective lens. With that sangria lens you're wearing, uh, we're wearing that doesn't have a mirror on it. We're the other stuff in the square groupers because we don't offer or didn't offer the sangria in a and and that style mm-hmm. does have a mirror and so it will shine but we've got some stuff coming up and billy if you want to jump in and talk about our stuff we're, we're about to receive and start testing from a, a waterfowl standpoint 
As waterfowlers, we experience all kinds of extreme weather conditions. Stay bone dry and warm with Frog Togs hunting gear. You can check them out at frogtogs.com or at Frog Togs Hunt on Instagram. Heck yeah. 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 So we, we, you know, right now we have a clay lens and the sangria is a, uh, our go-to wing shooting lens right now. And it's a, a fantastic lens. It, it really allows you to pick up details that you wouldn't see without it, and especially when you get a little bit of sun out. Uh, it, you know, you always have the, you're always squinting a little bit when you have the sun coming into your face. But if you put a pair of sunglasses on or a pair of our optics on, yeah, you're right. It doesn't have a reflection because you have an anti-reflective coating on it. Mm-hmm. And like what Rob said, it doesn't have a mirror so that it doesn't have a, a mirror type reflection. Mm-hmm. But what we're doing right now is we're trying to evolve it just a little bit more. So, you know, I'll step back and say that that's the, the principle behind the founding principle behind our company as a whole is that we're always going to evolve. And so the way we evolve is by having guys like, like both of you test our lenses, go out, give us feedback so that we know better what to do. Cause we're in the field, Rob and I hunt, we fish a lot, but it takes more than just our opinion to, to make this work. So mm-hmm. we're looking for all of our, our, uh, ambassadors, our pro staff, our guys that do the testing to give us really detailed feedback. So we know which way, which direction to go. Mm-hmm. And, and we created a, a fantastic feedback loop with Zeiss. So we have a, a direct line. Once we partnered with them, we have a direct line to their R and D department. So it's, That's it's great. really an amazing tool for us to be able to call, you know, pick up the phone and call Zeiss R and D over in Italy and say, Hey, this is what we're, we're looking to do but wow. so long before you get back to what rob asked was uh we have a new lens that we're just in the testing phase with which you guys will be will be getting a pair of and uh we're calling it a blackout lens it's a, a non-mirrored black lens that is dialed in specifically for waterfowl hunting nice. and we're we're just absolutely expecting great things from it and the idea is, again, that you're not going to have any reflection off of it. Just like what you said, Tristan, it's going to blend to your environment mm-hmm. so that you don't have to flare from, from the waterfowl. And uh, it, I, I'm telling you, what, what we have so far, this, this lens is going to be going to be amazing. You're going to love it. I, I'm stoked to check it out. And, you know, one of the things that <clears throat> uh, that you guys had said when we had first started talking is that um, with plastic lenses, the standard and like the industry is like looking through a glass or a uh, plastic bottle, I think. And, um, <laughs> you know, these one, I remember distinctively, like in the spring before I was even out really fishing or hunting at all. Um, when I'd first got them, I remember walking in our park and just like looking at the blue sky and these are the, you know, the, I think these are the inshore, like an inshore fishing lens which this is not, you know, the application behind this, but I just, one of the things that struck me is how um, clear it was. And then, you know, uh, I think it was Rob or maybe it was you, Billy, that said something about the squinting. You're always kind of squinting. I remember I kind of looking at the sky, like crystal clear blue sky and just being like completely like my eyes felt relaxed, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, what's amazing when I got into this and Billy was knee deep by the time I joined, but mm-hmm. I, I was blown away by the capabilities and the science behind it. I mean, it, we, we partnered with ice and the guys in lap, uh, lap coats with the propeller heads, I call them. Mm-hmm. It is, <laughs> it is amazing. The things that they are doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it truly is amazing. What's available in color science and the research that's been done but again, nobody's really doing it. And and I think that the biggest reason is it's expensive. It's hard. Mm-hmm. You, it, it's going to be diff, difficult for us to scale to a point where we're in a big box store because we've got so many different SKUs. For, we're, we're a nightmare from a SKU perspective mm-hmm. because we want to make sure that we are absolutely giving our customers the best tool possible for each pursuit. Well, you know, and you you had pointed out a lens. I, I don't know which one, but I'm, you guys obviously will know is, um, you know, polarized gives you that glare off of a, um, you know, a screen like you're looking at your fish finder. And I know for our fishermen listening, 
Um, there's a lens that you guys possess that kind of is like a middle ground where you can have some vision into the water that cuts down some of that glare off the sun, but also where you can see your electronics, right? Yeah, I'll jump in on that. I, mm-hmm. We developed a lens called Light Pro, and mm-hmm. it, this came exactly out of the evolution of, of all of our gear that we're talking about. I, a lot of our bass fishermen and, and crappie fishermen are running live scopes now mm-hmm. for hummingbird lives. There's several different models. Uh, but what the problem is is that they put a, a polarizing film on that. In fact, the, your LCD computer monitor has a polarizing film if you want to get down to the weeds of it. Uh, but what it does is that polarizing film allows the LCD to, when it twists the light so that you get colors on a screen, it allows you to actually see that through that polarizing filter. Well, the problem is if you've ever taken two pair of polarized sunglasses and turned them sideways, you get a very dark image. And so that's what was happening with these guys that are going out on the water looking at these live scopes all day. And I'm, I'm, I guess using a generic term for a forward facing sonar mm-hmm. or any of our, our electronics for that matter. Uh, what happens is you get this real dark image. And so you get it if you're not directly in front of it or have your head held just the right angle, you get this dark image and now you can't see it. And what guys were doing was the absolute worst thing that they could possibly do. They were taking their sunglasses off and now you're doing a, a you know, I don't want to go start preaching to, to everybody, but you're doing a, a tremendous disservice to yourself if you're not wearing sunglasses because you get, so much UVA, UVB radiation that comes into your eyes that it's damaging your eyes. So mm-hmm. especially get out on the water. So if you have that reflective glare off of the water, it's really bad. But what we're able to do with that light pro lens is we were able to, to go to Zeiss and say, here's the problem. These are the parameters of the problem and what we think we need to do. And they were able to dial back the amount of polarization from 100 percent to 47 mm-hmm. percent and what that did was give, gives you an opportunity you can get anywhere in the boat and see that screen crystal clear just as good as you could with no sunglasses on at all wow and but you still at 47 percent. that was kind of the magic number that we still have uh the the reflection the glare issue controlled so that you don't get the glare and then another thing that that people don't understand most of the time is that it's not the tint the darkness of the lens that gives you protection from the radiation it is what makes your eyes comfortable and relaxed but there's a filter a uva uvb filter that and uvc filter that is on that lens so i can have a clear pair of lenses that can block 100 percent of the uva radiation but that's what's important so in that uh, light pro lens 47%, 47%, and, and it's a gradient lens, the, the model that we offer right now. So it's darker, more tint at the top and lighter at the bottom. And the idea was if you're looking between your electronics and where you might be casting or dropping the jig, then you have a the more relaxing comfort level when you look up mm-hmm. than when you look down, you have a, a brighter picture. So that that was one thing. And and just to go a little bit, Tristan, what you were saying about the clarity, Mm -hmm. what we do is we use a a nylon lens, but it's not glass and it's not plastic. So most people offer either a glass, real heavy and uncomfortable if you if you wear it for more than you know a couple hours right and then offer a plastic lens, which is just like what what you said. I know you've been talking to Rob now because it's a great example that he uses that it's a uh, it's like looking through a, a plastic water bottle. I mean, polycarbonate yeah. is, is just the, the cheapest. Uh, it's not the lens that you want to wear. But what I'd invite you to do is put on that nylon lens, which is clearer than glass, mm-hmm. and go out. And instead of just looking at the sky, what I would say is if you're in the field, look at the cattails, look at the sunflowers, look at the the, the leaves of a tree, mm-hmm. and then take it off and do the same thing, and you'll be absolutely blown away by the clarity of an of a polyamide not polycarbonate polyamide lens wow. so it, it's yeah it, it's optically perfect meaning there's no distortion whatsoever and that's how it gets a higher rating from clarity perspective than mineral glass you know that's what crazy. i'm going to jump in here and just kind of throw a curveball the older i get no pun intended <laughs> right the older I get and the more I'm on these podcasts and I talk to and 
so many intelligent people. It, I'm just blown away with the technology, how you can take something like you guys are doing with these lenses and there is purpose, like you said, purpose built optics. There's purpose behind everything you're doing. And it's, it's, I'm just sitting here like a sponge to mm -hmm. what you're talking about right now because it, it makes so much sense. Well, and one thing, you know, <clears throat> before like I had talked to Rob and stuff um, and saw purpose built optics, you know, your natural instinct is to think of uh, the companies that kind of buzzword, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think Rob used the example of like, you know, I think it was like green lenses for inshore, offshore, or blue, you know, whatever. So you think as a consumer, and at the time when I lived in Florida, I'm just buying whatever because they look cool, you know. I don't, I'm like, oh, fishing sunglasses, I go fishing, cool, all right, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I right. don't, you know, I don't know, but um, once I to hear you guys drill down on the science and like how far it's come and the um, technology of these lenses is just absolutely mind blowing. Yeah. It, no, it, there's no doubt it gives you a, a, a great advantage and because here's the thing. I'm 50 right now, mm -hmm. right now. And the other day I'm on the laptop, probably about a month ago, my wife walks up and takes a pair of readers and flops them over my head onto my nose. And I go, holy cow. <laughs> I go, man, I, I didn't even realize because I was talking about having headaches and things like that. And she did that, and I didn't realize how blind I was. It was like the first time, you know, like whenever you look at stuff in the 90s and stuff, TV, you're like, did I really watch it that blurry? Mm -hmm. You know, or movies or things like that. That's what it made me feel like. And it, immediately I thought about what you guys are doing, and I have zero issues with you guys' glasses. I'm not saying they're readers. I'm not, that's not the point I'm making. I'm just saying, this is somebody that's obviously struggling um, as a 50-year-old man with my vision, well, and I don't have an issue. And you know what's interesting you bring that up is, like, <clears throat> when I went to the—I went to the—you guys are going to find this funny. This is actually a funny story. I went to the eye doctor a few years ago a few <clears throat> years ago because I started seeing floaters, and I'm like, what the heck? I, I convinced myself I had eye cancer. Like, no doubt in my mind I had Called eye cancer. his mom. That's a nurse <laughs> practitioner. Mom! Yep. I'm like, why am I seeing all these floaters? And so I go to the doctor, and they're like, no, nothing's wrong. And what they told me is two different things. One, they said my eyes produce um, half the amount of, like, you know, liquid or whatever to hydrate them as they should. So, like, I always, cloudy days, whatever, I'm always wearing sunglasses for that reason. Um, and the other reason <clears throat> is uh, those floaters. You know, mm -hmm. they drive me nuts, and my eyes are perfectly healthy, but what they said is that we look at so many screens as younger people mm -hmm. that it's deteriorating our eyes at a faster rate than, like, people older than us. So, you know, I'm always, it's, you know, you talk about eye health, that's something that I'm, you know, I'm always rocking some glasses for that reason, you know? Yeah, talk about the advantage. I'm going to throw you guys on the spot right here. Talk about the advantages of your optics from a health perspective. Yeah, Tony, I, I, I'm going to let Billy get that one. But before I want to go back to what you're saying in terms of, uh, by the way, we're right there with you. Uh, our eyes are starting to go south as well. So I get <laughs> I get the whole, the whole uh, reader perspective. But what you articulated right there unknowingly is really our whole value problem. And, and what we've got to do is educate our customer, the, the, the folks that are doing what we do, mm -hmm. that there's a better op alternative out there. And then we've got a solution for a problem, quite frankly, that people really don't realize they have because we've been conditioned to what the, what's always been. And we pick up that pair of glasses because we're going fishing because that's what all the cool kids are wearing. Yep. That's what you without, did. Yeah. <laughs> without recognizing that there is a better way. And in fact, You'll talk to guys. I mean, one thing that we get quite a bit is, uh, okay, so you've got 17 different lenses. By the way, we're going to have more. Short <laughs> short <-term. laughs> so are you, at, you're telling me that if I'm going to go fish on the flats, I got to have a different pair of glasses. And if I'm going to go offshore, if I'm going to go hot ducks or whatever. And the, the answer is no. I mean, I've killed a million dove and a bunch of ducks wearing the other guy's glasses. You can do that. But at the same time, you go to a guy that's fast fishing. He's got 32 different rods at his feet. Yep. One for top water, one for jigging, one for uh, frog, one for all of that. 
if you want to take the most advantage possible and make make the most of every opportunity, try ours because there is a there is a scientific functional advantage that we provide that you just aren't aware of because nobody else is doing it. Well, and I think you bring up another incredible point, and that is, look, you know, I've talked, I've been lucky enough to know some people that play, say, in the NFL, right? And yep. what they talk to, they talk about more, and you, you know this from any professional sports person, is the difference is in the technique. Mm-hmm. They, they just talk about perfecting the technique, the you know? Yeah, the details, those minor details. And so you're always looking to give yourself that advantage in a, in a fair way. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And Hunters are no different. No, we're no mm-hmm. different. And it, I mean, it, it doesn't mean I can't go out there and shoot my limit if, if they're in front of my face. Yeah. But well, the, the things that I'll get to pick up on, mm-hmm. like, like I was saying earlier, ducks are flying by. I don't know what the hell they are. With these lenses, I really do feel like it does give me an advantage to see the flicker of the wing or whatever. Well, in the point you brought up, Rob, too, the same thing you're saying, Tony, is like, <clears throat> I'm looking at some Dakota flock decoys right now. Is there a reason to put a flocked head on a, a green head mallard? Probably not. Right. I probably wouldn't. But, you know, if you're trying, if you're in Arkansas and it's as competitive as you get, yep. why wouldn't you want to give yourself just that little touch of difference to give an advantage? Well, you I mean, get, if you're you, serious about well, it. Well, I'll tell you the main <clears throat> reason why, just to explore this, even though I know it's not optics related, yeah. but it gives a great example of what Hooked and Bullet is doing, mm-hmm. is, yeah, do do decoy sellers sell decoys because they look pretty? Yep. So don't sunglasses manufacturers, right? Mm-hmm. But if I have five ducks that land in my spread and there's 75 behind them Mm -hmm. and they jump into my spread and they think it looks like a duck Mm -hmm. and hold there, even if it's another five or 10 seconds, it can make the difference of you shooting the hell out of them. For sure. And so that's where I'm going with with that analogy is it's no different here. Yeah. Well, it's funny. And and I'll let Billy jump in on the, on, on the health aspects in just a second, but you raised a lot of points here and we could talk for hours, obviously. We're <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's doing. freaking do it. <laughs> Tony, Tony, you'll appreciate this. And I was talking to Billy about it uh, the other day. We're both bow hunters mm-hmm. and, and I've got a new bow and, and I've, I've, I had the yips last year and I'm trying to get past that, whatever. But one thing that I figured out is I set up a, a block target at 30 yards, whatever mm-hmm. it may be. And by the time, once I start wearing out all the black and the various target circles, I start getting a little bit wild. I mean, I'm not missing yeah. the, the block, but I'm missing the sweet spot. Mm-hmm. And what I've found is if I'll take a, a piece of ribbon, white, red, some color that I can pick up, I can smoke that, that little bitty piece. And the difference is my eye focuses on, you know, that one patch of hair on a deer or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. better and and i'm in a better position to make a, a better shot and that's the same thing that we're doing with pbo it's again just getting that a little bit of advantage so you can make make the most of it you and may it translate translates to duck hunting to shooting a dove to cast them to a redfish or bonefish or seeing a billfish hot in the back of the baits and making sure that what you're actually seeing is a fin as opposed to uh, the wake breaking mm-hmm. and so the little bitty details there that can make all the difference in the world between having a good time uh, or catching a bunch of fish. Yep. Now, you you bring an incredible point to rise here, and we're going to talk about this from an archery perspective, all right? So a few years ago, we got Drew, that's part of our staff. Um, I got him into bow hunting, and he said, I just want to shoot a bow, you know, and uh, if you guys don't know a little bit of background about my myself, um, my mom was the first man or woman in the world to shoot three non-typicals that made the Pope and Young record book. She did that with a bow. Uh, yeah, yeah, she was actually Fantastic. on. Yeah, she was on the front page of Buckmasters magazine as America's best lady bow hunter. Um, we're going to be doing something special for 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 my mom here soon. But um, here's my point. She would always talk about. She goes even when she was shooting nationals you know, open field nationals, she said, if you aim at the target, the, the, the pin will go there. You don't put the pin on the target. You stare at your target and the pin comes to the target. 
And I found that to be so true, more so with you when you're shooting a rifle or you know shooting through a scope. But you're doing the same thing, really, when you're shooting a shotgun. You know, no yeah. different. And here's the thing that we did an archery season in practice when I was teaching Drew is I said, we picked up this morel target mm-hmm. and on one side of it, it had a dartboard mm-hmm. and it was the exact same scale size as a dartboard that you see at the bar. And I said, Hey guys, let's play some cricket. You know, I was like, you know, I know that game. I've, I've had a, a heck of a lot of beers and darts in, in a bar. <laughs> and I can do this. And may, we're just like, man, this is going to be fun. Well, I never shot my bow focusing that much on perfection. Because a triple 20 at 20 yards is a very small target with a bow. (laughs) And I'm sitting here right now going, man... If we ever do that again, I'm not going to tell Drew that I got these hooked and bullet glasses on <laughs> <laughs> because I, he's like, dude, how are you hitting? But here's the thing that we I want to make a point about. We elevated our game to a, such a point mm. that now all three of us, instead of just shooting a 20, now we're, dude, he needs a triple 20 to win it. <laughs> you know, this is his last arrow. You know, and that's how good we got that summer because we raised our own performance. And to think that you have optics that help you go beyond what you can do as a human is is pretty cool yeah. in, my, in my mind. And so that's where I was going with all that. You, you know, Tony, I, I would say right now it might be a good thing to – there's a lot of – there's always going to be the non-believers, right? Mm-hmm. I, I don't believe. Mm-hmm. but. What we do is we offer a 30-day guarantee. We offer a lifetime warranty, but a 30-day guarantee to anybody that buys our class is that if they don't perform the way that we say they're going to perform, send them back. We'll give you your money back. That's no no question asked. And the funny thing, I had a uh, had a phone call today from a customer, and I was I was talking to him through, and he was looking at buying a pair. And he he brought up this this crazy thing. He he, he was saying, "Well, what if they don't work? What if they don't work?" and he goes, you know what? But you know, if somebody had told me um, ten years ago I could be standing on top of Mount Everest and FaceTime my wife back home, mm-hmm. I would have believed it. But, sure. But it's but you can do it. Mm-hmm. And and so a lot of people don't believe in the technology until somebody does just like what your wife did and puts a pair of glasses on their head and says, "Okay, now look." Yeah. And and it does make a difference. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't make a difference for you, you don't want to keep the glasses. Send them back. Right. We don't have a problem. Yeah, that's so. That's so. I mean, y'all, if you if you if you're watching this, and Tristan will probably create a little clip with this. Is do you want coffee that doesn't suck? Get the duck. Dirty duck coffee is made specifically for the waterfowl enthusiast. Enjoy flavors like morning wood, dark dynasty. Cinnamon teal snickerdoodle and first flight to unlock the flavor that you'll enjoy in the blind for years to come. Our friends at Dirty Duck Coffee Company are now offering all Zero Duck 30 followers a 15% discount when you use code Zero Duck 15 on your next order. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? Yeah. Why wouldn't you? I mean, seriously, with all the money that we go out and spend in, in everything that we hunt mm-hmm. or fish, why wouldn't you? Exactly. I mean, I'm just thinking about it from a, you know, I'm not a big offshore fisherman, but I've been part of the process. I've got some friends of mine that are big time offshore fishermen. And I I know the reason why I'm not an off, offshore fisherman. I can't afford it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't afford it. Um, and um, I, I'm just sitting there going, dude, why wouldn't you? I mean, are you wearing that brand because you want to look cool? Mm. Are you wearing that brand? Because here's the thing, right? Does everybody go out and buy Nikes? Yep. Yeah. Even after all the BS, right? Mm-hmm. People still buy Nikes. Mm-hmm. Why? Brand? Mm-hmm. Yep. To look cool? Whatever it is. Yep. But, it also, it. It, but it's also performance. 
Okay, mm-hmm. they do have leading technology in what they do. I wouldn't say they're the best. I mean, and that's just my opinion. But I'm just using that as a small example. Is if you're going to spend that much money on something mm-hmm. to look cool, why wouldn't you have it give you an advantage too? Yeah, it creates way more value. Well, and <clears throat> excuse me if I'm getting too in the weeds, but with this thing I'm going to bring up, but I what really blew my mind is that you guys are so committed to try to be different that well not to not try to be different you guys are truly are different and you know one of you guys brought up before earlier that to get that message out to people Mm -hmm. because that's the thing you got to get that message out to people to believe it and uh, i think it was rob that told me example of at a trade show a company you know said hey you know we really like what you're doing would be open to putting these in a lot of stores and you're so confident in what you're doing that you don't believe that you know putting it as a fashion statement on a corner is going to get the word out versus like what you guys are doing, like the man work, going to these shows, talking to people like us, whatever it may be to get the word out, you know? And I just, that really blew my mind. Yeah. I kind of look at it like a, like a, like a new saw, right? Mm-hmm. You, you know, you watch the infomercial and stuff. You don't know until you pick that thing up and do it. Mm-hmm. And once you pick it up, you're telling everybody about it. And as you, as you guys know, there's nothing stronger than what I call movie marketing. It's that, it's that, it's that repetitive marketing, and there's nothing going to replace a good tool. And and people just naturally are going to say, "Yo, I was wear, I was wearing these," and you're going to talk about it. Mm-hmm. You know, and somebody goes, "Hey, look at my new." Especially hunters. Yeah, no, I don't want to even say the brands. And golfers. Yeah, yeah, I don't even <laughs> want to say the brands, but I've had several friends of mine that come up to me and go, "Yeah, hey, look at my new." Beep, beep. I'm not going to say the name of the brands. And I go, oh, yeah, that's great. And I just kind of go, why in the hell would you spend that much money? You know, I mean, honestly, I can go around here and get a a $12 pair of polarized sunglasses that are doing exactly what your $250 sunglasses are doing. And so now that you guys are starting to um, disrupt disrupt the market Mm -hmm. with what you're doing because it's factual. You 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 can't beat that. There, mm-hmm. you cannot beat the truth. Yeah, exactly. You can't science. Science. Yep, that's right. Well, when we got involved with Sice, they were actually doing this on the professional shooting side, and and the the that other company has done a tremendous job, and and actually they offer over seventy different lenses for for various target acquisitions and wow. the true 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 uh, uh, shooting sports. But we sat down with Zeiss and said, number one, does that science transfer into the fishing and the recreational hunting uh, arena? And number two, is anybody do it? Anybody else doing it? And they said, yeah, absolutely it does. And we can prove it scientifically. And number two, nobody has taken it to that to that length. And uh, let's go. Wow. And that's really, that's really how PBO got started. But uh, you were talking about being different. We are different. And we don't look at some of the fashion guys i mean if you want mm-hmm. if you want to choose from 150 different frames go buy costa if that's really what gets you, gets you off of something that you look pretty in go yeah. buy them because they've got them and there's a great market a giant market for that but if you really want a functional advantage take a look at hook and bullet and and what we're trying to do is build a new category of purpose-built optics and it's just different it's for those that are looking for the advantage heck yeah guys yeah, it's um. Th- there's no doubt that um, the when people see the advantage and they hear the message and everything, there's no doubt that, uh, and I know you guys have all the confidence in the world, obviously, in it that they're gonna <clears throat> realize what you guys are doing, and um, it's just it's awesome stuff, guys. Um, as far as any other projects you guys got going on, is there anything on the fishing side of things or any other projects you guys got working on, going on? Yeah, you know, you know, Tristan, it, it's it's an evolution, and truly is. And so we have a a pretty good pro staff built up right now, and we're we're still adding to it. And mm-hmm. these guys, that's just such tremendous feedback that every every literally every day we're talking to somebody on our pro staff or some ambassador or mm-hmm. or even customers that are calling up and telling us that you know, hey, th- this is great, but but you know, what could you do this? Mm-hmm. And if it, you know, and sometimes, sometimes it's good suggestions and sometimes it, 
it really doesn't fit our plan. But yeah, there's a there's an evolution in what we're doing that we are like Rob said, we have 17 different lenses. We got two more new, three more new ones coming up. Mm -hmm. The uh, two more for Light Pro, which is your electronics, and then one for the duck hunters. Mm -hmm. um, and so there, there's always going to be an evolution, and there's always going to be projects in the work, and there's always going to be, you know, varying all the details. So there's, there's so many details, like I was telling you before, behind, behind the mirrors. So the mirrors, the fashion, and behind the mirrors, the function. Mm -hmm. And the functionality of a lens has a lot of details involved. You know, how much light's coming in? What colors are we muting? What colors are we, are we accentuating? What, what's the contrast? What's, you know, we go through all these different details. But one thing that they all have, and this kind of comes back to your health question, Tony, one thing that they all have is 100% UVA, UVB uh, protection. So the radiation from the sun that does the damage to your eyes is, is always going to be there. And then we also have you know certain things like, um, it's called a premium hard coating, but it's essentially the same thing as like the gel coating on your car. So everybody asks, will, will your will your lens scratch? Well, yeah, if you just, you know, if you absolutely destroy them, uh -huh. be, if you take a modicum of, of, of care of them, you, then no, they won't. I've got the same pair of lenses that I've been wearing for two years right now, and they don't have a scratch on them. Uh, and that's because of that premium hard coating or that gel coating that goes on the outside of the lens. But there's an evolution that's going on in this market w with us that is – is something that just hadn't happened in the last 40 years. You know, we've, mm -hmm. we're like what Rob was saying, we're using the same lenses that we're using, you know, in the eighties and nineties. Mm. Yeah. And so yeah, there, there's always going to be new products, new projects. And we have a, Oh, and I said three, we've got four. New lenses. We got a new freshwater lens that's coming up too. Heck yeah. yeah. Um, yep. it's interesting. You bring up the scratches on the lenses because, uh, you know, I had noticed, well, one thing I've noticed about the square groupers is that they get, like, towards the end, they get kind of narrow, you know? And with the croquis, you know, they can kind of slide. They're good most of the time, but every once in a while, you know, I might, the croquis might come loose or whatever, whatever you want to call those, those neck things, you know, with your glasses. Mm -hmm. yeah. Might come yeah. loose. Lanyard. Might, yeah. Lanyard, yeah, I might drop them. And uh, I've noticed that, I was like, sometimes I've dropped them like square on the concrete, and I'm like, that is, I'm not gonna be happy when I look at that. <laughs> and I'm, so I thought I was like, before you were talking about the poly, what was it, poly may, poly something, uh, polyamide, polyamide. When before you told me that, I just thought it was like a special type of, I mean, a special type of plastic. I didn't know it was like a nylon lens type thing, and with this polyamide and gel coating and all that stuff. So it makes sense to me why these haven't scratched up now that I heard that. Because before I was like, I guess I'm pretty damn lucky. I don't know. Like, <laughs> well, I mean, I think you gotta you gotta kind of look at it like, you know, you don't go running through the swamp in a brand new suit. Yeah. Okay. Right. I mean, you just don't. And no. if you want your shoes to look nice, you take care of your shoes. You know, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And I think it's no different. Well, you know, yeah. you respect these uh, this tool that you have and you take good care of it, you right. know, and if you don't take care, care of it, that's what you're going to get. You know, it's just like, you don't change the oil in your car. Yeah. It's not going to be good. You know, <laughs> so that's right. yeah, kind of a funny story there. Uh, I'm sure you guys know John Goglin from yeah. Duck Dynasty and Duck Commander. John's on our pro staff and oddly enough, he's a big crappie fisherman and that's actually how we, we got together and he, he loves hook and bullet, but for the first season, the duck season, he took, our, our gen one shooting lens out and uh we started talking about it and he said rob i can't scratch these things up he says normally <laughs> i go through three pairs of glasses throughout duck season because i'm wow. busting brush and going through the the button uh brush and bushes and, and get them all scratched up he says i've got stuff in my pockets and down the nape of my neck and in my jacket but he says i can't scratch these glasses up wow that's, that's so cool so, yeah, so let's just nutshell this, all right? Folks, if you're listening to the podcast, here's what you get. You're getting a very competitively priced lens that is super great quality, super durable, a 30-day money-back guarantee, no questions asked, 
lifetime warranty, and it gives you an advantage of what you're doing, shut up. Or what they say, drop the mic. Yeah, is what they say. Drop the mic. (laughs) I mean, drop the mic. I mean, if you're not sold. What do these youngins say? (laughs) Yeah, but yeah, I mean, but if you don't, there's a lot of things that we used to say that if we say that to you, it means something completely different. (laughs) Yeah, true. All right, but like I got I got chastised because I responded to a text wrong and I said K. Yeah, that's and my daughter goes. What in the hell did I do? Yeah. And I go, what are you talking about? <laughs> That's exactly. It's just like, when you say K, it's just kind of like, yeah, K. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. And then I did it, I did it O capitalized and K capitalized. She goes, oh my God, what did you do? Or That's what? so true. And I go, she goes, quit yelling at me. And I go, what are you talking about? And so I did lowercase okay. And I'm like, she didn't respond after that. And I was like, okay, I must have did it right. That's so true. <laughs> that's funny yep so um as far as the upcoming i know you guys are always on the road doing shows and stuff um where can people come meet you guys in person and uh what do you guys got going on over the next year maybe um that people can come try these on the dance cards filling up but bill talk about what we've got coming up short term Immediately, we're uh, we're going to be over in Branson, Missouri, for Mr. Crappie. Uh, that's I think the latter part of October is our, our next bigger show for their. They're having the Mr. Crappie Invitational, which which is a great tournament. It's um, uh, I think three hundred thousand dollars this year in, in wow. prize money. Yeah, for a crappie tournament, that's that's huge. Mm-hmm. So we're going to be up there. We we uh, that's a good market for us. So there, everybody in that tournament. If you're going to be competing, you're going to be watching a, a live scope or or a forward facing sonar hummingbird live or low rants. Um, but we'll be there, and then we uh, we're trying to make our big retail push in 2023. So we'll be getting into a lot of stores on the Gulf Coast and throughout the Midwest that. Um, you'll be able to go in and try on glasses and, and see what we've got. So we've already got a lot of retailers lined up and we're very excited about that. Just dialing in some of the, the final parts of that to get it, get it, get it out. Heck yeah. And then what, what else do we have, Rob? Well, ultimately we'll end up in ICAST in July in Orlando, which is the big fishing show mm-hmm. uh, for next year. But there's just, there's, there, as you would expect, there's all kinds of regional shows and, and opportunities around as well as some of the, the larger ones as well. Do you, um, funny you bring up Orlando, are you guys, is it the Orlando Convention Center where that's held, do you know? Yes. Okay. Um, so my fiance's mom lives down in Orlando, so we might have to make a little trip to see mom and see you guys at the same time. <laughs> Our partners at HuntWise are offering an exclusive discount for Zero Duck 30 followers. As an elite member, some of the features you'll immediately gain access to are HuntCast, WindCast, Peak Kill Times, Property Lines, Owner Information and Phone Lookup, 250 map layers, unlimited offline maps, 3D maps, social media, and on top of it all, save up to 50% off some of the top hunting brands in the industry. Download and explore the number one hunting tool set today and save 20% by using code DUCK30. We definitely need to get together. Mm -hmm. Um, We need to go duck hunt. Uh, And then also, if you've got a second, talk about uh, uh, Gary Marshall and and, uh, what we're doing there. And is that November or December? Oh, oh, uh, Uh, Gary Marshall. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if you guys follow. He's, he's got a television show on the um, the Pursuit Channel called Legends of the Outdoors. And yep. We're gonna we're gonna shoot a show with him uh, in Tennessee, uh, duck hunting this year. So we're we're really excited about that. Getting to go out there and and hang out with some of the the big names in the industry and. Heck yeah. I don't know who else is going to be on that one, but it'll, it'll be a heck of a lot of fun. So <laughs> that's, that's a great opportunity for Abs- us. Absolutely. To be able to, you know, sh- show these guys right in the blind, like, hey, put these sunglasses on and see what you see, you know? Yeah. It- well, he, he, he's an interesting guy because he he uh, he also coaches the most winning uh, collegiate bass fishing team ever. 
Wow. And that's Bethel University. And I think he's coached them for 17 years now. And they have, and, and Gary, if I'm saying this wrong, forgive me, but I think he's got 12 or 13 national championships mm. uh, with that team from a fairly small college. So it's, it's, um, it's pretty amazing. And so we, we sponsor a lot of teams like that. So we're going to, we're working on the details of, sp- of a sponsorship for the, the Bethel team, but we also sponsor a lot of high school teams as well. So uh, we're really excited about getting the product in the hands of, of you know, the youth, the, uh, the people that are going to be making a difference in our, in our country. So as Rob and I get tired and old and fade away, then we want, want this to carry on with, with uh, the youth of, of, of the, of America. Well, well guys, I'm glad you brought that up because how does, you know, you're talking about sponsoring college teams and stuff. How does this whole NIL thing play name and image and likeness? How does this play into like some of the stuff you can do for, athletes you know in the outdoors industry or whatever um can you kind of talk a little bit about that like have you guys crossed any of that kind of nca yeah, yeah. stuff I, I think i think and rob you may be able to elaborate on this but i think uh a lot of these bass fishing teams are clubs club organizations oh, okay for, versus uh sponsored teams so they might not uh, go through all of the same uh, restrictions that you might through a, a normal nil type environment i gotcha well i guess as a follow-up as has there any i guess from like an ambassador side of things like have has there been anybody that's like let's say they're playing at alabama and they're the left tackle or something and they're a huge outdoorsman and got a big instagram presence or whatever it may be i'm just throwing out something has there been any of that that's kind of came across your guys's like um desk or anything as far as that kind of stuff well, you know how Instagram works. I mean, we daily we get people that, uh, mm-hmm. that supposedly want to want to rep our brand. So we're, sure. we're very we're very discerning about. And if it's a form letter message on Instagram, we really don't pay attention. But yeah. if, if somebody's talking about, they know us, they looked at us, they've heard about us, they understand what we're trying to do. We'll entertain the conversation. But we really, although we Bill can talk about our our pro staff and guide. A program that we have but in just in terms of influencers that's really not what we're about we want yeah. somebody that's going to get out there and use them test them give us the bad the good the bad and the ugly it, you know mm-hmm. it, it doesn't do you any good to have somebody tell you everything's great all the time we right. need people to say look this lens is terrible and here's <laughs> why i mean well yeah, i mean it, as much as somebody saying this is the best thing i've ever, ever put on my well it, it brings up and you know you made a very good business point there you know we're we're not you're not socially supporting you're supporting people that are using this stuff day in day out beating the shit out of it mm-hmm. doing all that just like us you know somebody said how many miles did you drive duck hunting last year? I said 37,000 miles. And they said, <laughs> what? And I said, yeah, dude. I said, you're not going to, you're not going to outbeat, you're not going to outrun me. I mean, I just, I go, you know, and I, and I, I go through a lot and, um, we appreciate the opportunity that, you know, <laughs> we truly are out there beating the shit out of them yeah. and, um, and using them like crazy, not only just during duck season, but big game seasons and everything else. There was three weekends we spent at home between September and January 30th last year because yeah. we were, I mean, well, either. for me, it was, it was the end of February cause snow geese, yeah, you I know, mean, so just... We're on the run, and we, you know we love it. We're psycho. I've been with my wife since I was sixteen, and, and that's the only reason why I get I get away with this shit, and <laughs> you know. But she she grew up with it, and um, um, but we so appreciate it, you know. And the other thing, y'all, if you're listening to this, and you're like, man, you know, you're like everybody else. You're the normal hunter out there, and you're like, man, I don't know if I could spend that much money on sunglasses. First, let me tell you, just send us a message. Mm-hmm. Send myself a message at HD Duck Hunter. Send a message to Zero Duck Thirty. Send a message to Tristan. If you need more information that we didn't cover on this podcast today, more reality, dude, just just call us and we'll be we'll be more than happy to talk to you and give you the information and the true results of these things that we've been wearing for a long time now. You know, I mean, and um, we're just going to tell you the truth for sure. Hey, Tony, I'll add to that. Uh, 
they can pick up the phone and call Rob or I too. So Perfect. Our, our numbers on the there you go on the website, and we'll be probably be the ones answering the phone, and uh, or they'll be directed to us if you're asking questions about the lenses or a particular lens selection or what what's best for you. Uh, we're, we're always, we're willing to talk to you. Well, where are you going to get sure. that, y'all? I mean, seriously, where you can call a company mm-hmm. and the owners are, it's not like the lawyer commercials that you hear on TV, you know, or the radio, they're like, call my cell at the, dude, you're not talking <laughs> and you're not talking to them, but, but these guys are truly there to, you know, they have ownership in this business and they want to teach you and tell you about these products and for them to be available like that is just mind blowing to me. Yeah, you, I think, um, <clears throat> you know, obviously you guys aren't going to brag on yourself, but I think it's pretty confident to say that you guys are really on to something special yeah. and got some big things coming. We're excited to be a part of it. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we appreciate the help. We're fired up, so call us and then we'll give you the story. All right, so when are we getting those new lenses? <laughs> no, I'm just, we can talk about that off camera, but no, but uh, I, I'm sitting here, I'm just itching, I'm itching, I'm itching, I'm itching, I mean, I'm itching to go out and go out in my lake back, go out in the lake behind my house mm. and just sit there and, and stare at what I see different with these lenses on. For sure. Well, you know, I one, know that was a bit, a bit tongue, tongue in cheek, but it, you raise a good point. The way that works is, is we get the formulations where we think we want them and then Zeiss makes them. And they send them to our our frame manufacturers in Italy. Gotcha. And so okay. from there they cut from there they cut the lenses, put them in frames, so we can actually wear them. And uh, so I I think we're uh, about a month away from having the uh, the blackout lenses and frames that we supply for you guys to try. Perfect. That'll be a month ahead of when our opening opening day is. We'll be in uh, Arkansas on opening day, and you can bet your ass we're going to have these hook and bullet lenses on. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Good deal. Good deal. Thank you so much, you guys. We're humbled. Again, thank you for spending so much time with us this evening. Um, we can't wait to have you guys back on and talk more about. Um, just a real quick breakdown. Where can everybody find you guys at? www.hookandbullet.life. Not .com, .life. Heck yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you and guys. And then you can find us on Instagram. Also, uh, throw that in uh, at Hook and Bullet Life and on Facebook at Hook and Bullet. Heck yeah. Well, thank you guys again. And uh, yeah, hopefully later down the line in duck season, we can kind of have a have another one and talk about how things have been going with the lenses and duck season. Yeah, hey, or even even go out and shoot some together. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I was going to say, let's share a blind. Yeah, do no that. doubt. All right, guys. Thank you. I've been southbound, I've been hellbound, riding on the midnight train. Going too fast now, think I'll slow.